Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. You can probably already play a C major 7 in 10 different ways, so it makes sense to start thinking about your chord voicings in categories because then you have a better overview. And what you also find is that if you're moving from one chord to the next in a progression, then if you stay in the same category voicing, then they're easier to voice lead. In this video, I'm going to go over nine of the most common different types of chord voicings that we work with in jazz. And hopefully it's going to give you a better overview of the chord voicings that you already know. And it's maybe also going to give you some new ideas of some new types of voicings that you can start incorporating into your own vocabulary. The nine categories that I'm going to go over in this video are all voicing types that I use really a lot, both when I'm comping behind a soloist and also when I'm playing a chord melody arrangement. An important aspect of choosing a chord voicing is also that each type of chord voicing kind of has a specific sound. And that also tells you a lot, of, a lot about how you're going to use it and why you want to use it. So in that way, it's also important to be aware of the different types of voicings that you have available. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you improvise or check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first group of voicings is the drop two voicings. So I expect you're already familiar with them, even if you don't know that they're called drop two voicings. So if I play the diatonic chords of C major with drop two voicings on the middle string set, that would be this. It isn't really essential to know how you construct a drop two voicing, but it is kind of nice to know what the drop two thing is all about. And also because we actually have three different categories of drop voicings that I'm going to talk about in this video. So if I take an inversion of a C major seven, so here I'm going to take uh, the inversion with the fifth as a lowest note, so that's going to be G, B, C, and E. Uh, mainly I'm taking this one because it's still playable, and also because it's going to turn into a voicing that we already know. So if I have this inversion, and then I take the second highest note, so that would be the C, and then put that down an octave, then I have, and then the C goes down here, goes down here. And another way of playing these notes would be this. So that's how we construct a drop two voicing. So we're taking just the, the standard inversions of the stack of thirds, and then we're dropping the second highest note down an octave to get something that's a little bit easier to play and sounds a little bit more open. And of course you can invert these. I think you'll find that in jazz, I'm not gonna go into inversions on all of these different voicing types simply because then the video is gonna get three hours long. But with the drop two voicings, those are definitely voicings that we tend to work a lot with inversions on. And if I take the C major seven voicing and then just do the inversions on the top string set, because that's also something where we're using the drop two voicing a lot, uh, then that would be this. And of course, if you wanna check out more on drop two voicings, I actually have a playlist with different videos on drop two voicings, explaining a lot of things about also dominance, adding extensions and other things you want to know when you're starting to use those in your playing, whether it's for chord soloing or for comping. The next category is the drop three voicing. So a drop three voicing is of course similar to the drop two, except now we're taking the third highest note and dropping that down an octave. Uh, just to illustrate that, so if I take uh, this inversion of a C major seven again, so here I'm going to do the, what is it, the third inversion of of a C major seven, which is kind of unplayable actually. So I'm just gonna do it like this. So B, C, E, and G. And then the uh, third highest note, so that's the C again, is being dropped down an octave. And then I can play the B here, and then I have this voicing. And I find mostly that these voicings, the bass note is kind of set a little bit apart from the rest of the chord. And that's really useful in some situations. I find that I use these mostly when I'm playing sort of in a, in a setting where I need to supply the bass note as well. So usually if there's no bass player in the band. Um, just to illustrate how this sounds in C major, I'm just gonna go from the first available chord that I have here, which is F major, and then through the scale, that would be this. The last of the drop voicing categories in this video is the drop two and four. So the way this is constructed, if I take this C major seven, which is just a stack of thirds, and then take the second and the fourth, so that's the G, so that's the second and 
C is the fourth highest note, and then take those down an octave, so then I get this. And an easier way to play that would be this. And this is a nice voicing for some more open sounds. Uh, I have a lot of videos on sort of more Alan Holsworth uh, type sounds because he uses this quite a lot. He, he, I think he really likes these type of voicings, and uh, or liked, in fact. If I play this through the scale, it sounds like this. Shell voicings are really practical ways of voicing chords so that you have the complete picture of the chord without using that many notes. So the idea is here that we take three notes and then we just have the essence of the chord. So in this case it's the root, third and seventh. So from already from this we know that this is a C major seven. If I take that through the scale, it sounds like this. Besides using these voicings in places where we need the root, so something like a samba, so, or maybe playing uh, more sort of Freddie Green styles, you can also use them higher up in, in a higher register and then use them as sort of incomplete upper structures for other voicings. They're equally useful for that. This next category of voicings, which I've called shell voicing based chords, is not something that I have a real name for. And uh, if one of you guys know a name, then leave a comment. I would kind of like to know what they're actually called. It's basically a shell voicing, and then I'm adding a nine on top of it. And these are again practical in situations where you want to have the bass note in there, and then um, the freedom to still play the complete chord. So also, thinking in terms of uh, bossa nova or other places where you have to play or supply a bass line. What you also see is that when I take this voicing and move it through the scale, then there are going to be two places where we get voicings that we're probably not going to be use, using that much because they are going to be minor voicings with a flat 9, which is not something that's very common uh, in the way that we usually voice chords in jazz. Until now, the chord voicings that I went over were sort of clearly connected to some sort of root. So if I'm playing this C major 7, then that's kind of clearly a C, and the same goes for this one. Uh, of course, we're still using inversions, so these are maybe a little bit less clear, but the examples that I went over, and also with the shell voicings, are sort of clearly connected to a certain root note. That's kind of going to change now, because now I'm going to go into some voicings that are much more open to interpretation. So even though I'm taking the structure and moving it through the scale, you can't really just connect it to one root and say it's this type of chord. And uh, that means that there are different ways of using them. I'll talk a little bit about that for each of the voicing types. Uh, and then hopefully you can also just start to take the notes that are in those voicings and relate them to the chords that you want to use them over. The first of these categories is triads. So triads are extremely important voicings when it comes to playing jazz chords. And usually what we do is that we just take a seventh note chord and then throw away the root and then play the upper structure of that. So in this case, if we have a D minor seven like this, then we'll throw away the D and then just play the F major triad that's on top of it and use that as a chord voicing for a D minor seven and leave the D to the bass, the bass player. So if I take these triads and move them through the scale uh, in the key of C, then we get this. So this F major triad could be the upper structure of a D minor, like this, as I just talked about, but it can also be the upper part of, of a G7 sus4. So there are different options available. And then we would probably put together different types of triads to get a chord progression. So something like... Um, so here I'm playing a 2 5 one in the key of C major, and then I'm first using the F major triad and then quickly going by a D minor triad on the D minor 7, and then this F diminished triad for a G7 flat 9, and then a C major 7, which is being played with an E minor triad. A different way of playing the triads is to use them as open voiced or spread triads. So if I take an A minor triad, like I was using in the previous scale exercise here, and then I take the second highest note, so it really this is a drop two, but then just of a triad. 
and then I take the C and take it down an octave, so I have this. And another way of playing that would be this structure. So here we have an open voiced or spread A minor triad. And if I take that through the scale, then we get this. This type of triad voicing is really useful because it has a nice open sound with all the larger intervals in there because it's a combination of a sixth and a fifth. And uh, that's something that you can use really well when you're comping. So uh, if I take uh, again a 2 5 one then that could be something like... So here we have an F major triad for the... And really it's the same thing as what I did with the, with the other triads where they were closed voiced. So it's just F major, F diminished, and then E minor on the C major 7. A very common sound that's maybe connected a little bit more to more modern jazz is chordal harmony. So three-part chordal harmony is something that's very practical on guitar, and uh, the way you play that through a scale will be this. These three-note voicings don't really always convey the complete picture of the chord, and we tend to use them sort of as structures that we move back and forth with, and then maybe the sum of two of those will give us the complete sound of the chord. Uh, if I use that on a 2 5 one then that could be something like this. So I'm using these two on the D minor 7, and then on the G7 I'm using this one, which actually is a voicing that only has alterations, it doesn't contain um, any 7th or 3rd. But the next one, so this one, contains both of those, and then the sharp 9. So together, these two will give us the sound of the altered chord, and then I'm resolving that to this also incomplete, but still uh, kind of clear C major 7, which has a 6 and a 9 and a 5th, but lacks the 3rd, which we kind of hear in the context of what's happening. Besides having the three-part chordal harmony, we also have a four-part chordal harmony that's quite common, and uh, if I play that through the C major scale, that could be something like this. These voicings can be really useful. They're kind of beautiful large voicings because they're stacked false in the scale. Uh, they can be tricky to use in functional harmony because it's difficult to sort of get them to voice lead. And very often the voicings will contain intervals that we might not want to have in there. So in this case, for instance, all these voicings, there's only going to be this one that really would work as a D minor seven, unless you want to have a D minor seven with a 13 like this one or like this one, which of course is also okay, but it is a little bit of a different sound and it's less connected with playing a 2 5 one in a standard. So you would use them more as specific voicings uh, for sort of more modal situations or if you want to have really sort of a sound sitting as a nice rich sounding chord voicing at some point in a piece. So that could be something like using this one, which is a stack of fours from, uh, from B, so B, E, A and D. And that makes for a very nice C major 7 voicing. And in the same way, if we were to use alter dominance, then um, this one would make for a good G7 altered. As you can tell, I'm not going into too much detail with how you use these voicings or how you figure out how to make inversions of them and similar things. I think those are the kind of things you can try to explore yourself, just knowing what kind of basic type of voicing it is. And uh, of course, I also have videos on most of these things, so you can also check out those videos if you want more information. If there is a type of voicing that you use really often that I didn't talk about in this video, then leave a comment, because in that way, then maybe there's a whole category of voicings that I need to check out. And of course, also, if you have any questions or if you want to see videos on some of these voicing types that I'm talking about, or if you can't find one of the videos that I already made on them, maybe I can also just give you a link to one of those videos. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding good methods and solid strategies for you to improve your playing and explore interesting things on jazz guitar. If you want to help me keep making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page. 
I'm very grateful for the support that I'm getting from my patrons. And it's because of that that I can keep making videos every week. So join the Patreon community. And if you join us over there, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and on to next week.